All right, so we're going to look at two-dimensional arrays and look at how to look at the edges and contents of the arrays. And for this, I'm going to show you how to create a Minesweeper map generator. So not really much, just a Minesweeper map generator. So we'll start out by creating, well, a few things. I want to initialize my random numbers, All right? So I'm going to include my, my C time library, and I'm going to include, include my C standard lib as well. And the very first thing I want to do is initialize or seed my random number generator. So seed the random number generator. It's not really actually a random, it's pseudo random, but that's okay. And the way you do that is you have an unsigned int of all your seed. You don't actually need to create a variable. You can just put it directly in there, but it's going to be a static cast unsigned int from my time function and I'm going to pass it the null pointer. So that will give me an unsigned int seed, which I can then put into my srand function to seed the random number generator. This only needs to be done once per program and then you are done. All right. At this point, I want to decide how big is my board. So decide the size, decide. Decide the size of the mine field. And so I'm going to decide that it's going to be a 25 by 25 board. Well, maybe a little smaller because I wanted to fit in the screen. So maybe a 15 by 15 board. So I will do a const int size equal to 25 or 15, maybe 20, 20 will fit. All right. So I want this to fit in the screen and be able to be display correctly. I also want a number of bombs or mines. So I'm going to say mines and let's say we're going to go with uh, 10 mines. I don't know if that's enough or how it's going to work, but we'll, we'll just start with 10 mines. Next, I'm going to create my field. So I'm going to do this as a character array. So the char, and then this is going to be field, and it's going to be a size by a size. Next, I want to, I guess, create everything. And the way I can do that is by um, running my my functions to generate the field and then um, something to maybe look at each of the spaces and figure out how many bombs are close to each one so I can get an idea of each one. All right. So let's go ahead and add some functions up here. So first of all, I'm going to do a random range. So int rand range because I want to figure out and randomly place the bombs and it's just easier with a, a function that can handle passing it some numbers for a high and a low and then it can just generate something in that range. Of course that's really easy to do but we'll just stick with this for now. Next I'm going to want to have one that will create the minefield. All right. So the minefield is going to be the array and that array needs to be passed in as a character array of field. And I have to give it the second size. So I'll put size right here. And at this point size is declared inside of my main function. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that out and put it up here so that it is available 
outside of main as well. So I'm going to get a global constant. I also want to pass into this, in addition to my field, I want to pass in the number of mines that I'm going to pass, or a number of a set. So I'll set that, pass it in as a normal variable, and that's mines. So I can create the field and put the mines in there. In addition to doing this, I'm going to want to have something where I can look at an individual square in the field and figure out how many mines are next to it. So um, I'll have an integer um, count near mines. So I need to pass in the field. So char field and pass in the size. I also want to pass in a location. And maybe let's go ahead and pass in the size to each of these, even though the size is a global constant. Let's do int size. And we'll pass in the int size here. And then I need to have an int x and an int y for coordinates of where I am looking to figure out how many mines are near that x and that y. All right. So that right there will take care of figuring it out. But then I want to go ahead and maybe have a function that will loop over the entire thing and count all the mines and put numbers in there and add everything up. So I will have, or I could put that inside of my create mine field. It would be either one. So maybe I'll put it in the uh, create mine field. So now I will start with my functions below. So copy this stuff right here, paste it, and I'll start with my random number function. So I'm going to pass it a high number and a low number and it wants to pick a random number in between. So I can just return and it's going to be a random number that is going to be, well, somewhere between the high and the low. So if the high is something like 10 and the low is 5, I'm going to want something between 10 minus 5 plus my low range. So I'll do a modular division of my high minus my low, which will give me some number. So that kind of gives me the range a little bit. It, the range is actually a little bit bigger than that because my low number, if my low number is 5 and it's between 5 and 10, it's going to be... A total of 5 to 10 which is six different numbers and I want to add one here and then I want to add my low number to this so return that number right there for something in that range next I'm going to go ahead and create my minefield so the minefield I'm going to first initialize the entire minefield with a character that indicates there's nothing there so the way I do that is I do a for loop for and I equals zero. I is less than size I plus plus. And then I'm going to do for and J equals zero. J is less than the size J plus plus. And what I'm going to do for each of these spaces is take the field location, I, J, and I'm going to set it to a character. So I'm going to just make it the space character. I guess I can space character like that. And so this right here is going to be my clear the field piece of code. Next, after I clear the field, I want to place mines. So how do I do that? Well, I'm going to count down the number of mines. So I'm going to have a for loop for that for int m equal to mines. And then actually maybe let's do int 0 m equal 
to zero. So while m is less than mines, m plus plus. So I'm going to do the number of mines loops here. And then what I want to do is find a location for a mine. And because I know the size, I can pick an x coordinate and a y coordinate. So I got an int x equals my rand range 0 to my number of size minus 1. So that's to be something between 0 and the size. And I'm do the same thing for my y coordinate. It's probably a lot more complex than it needs to be, but that's okay. 0 to size minus 1. Okay. Now, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is see if that location is available. And if that location is not available, that means there's something still there, or there's a mine over there, then I'm going to do the, the for loop over again. So if field, and we'll do x, y equals a space, then it's clear, and we can place that mine, and we're done. Then field x, y equals and we'll use a, an x for a for a mine else it is not available so what do we do we want to place in their mine but we don't want to increment our mines so we'll do m minus minus so we're going to do it over again so every time we find something that's not a space and we know there are spaces right now because we've we've set all the spaces. If it's not a space, then it must be an X. And so we're going to just decrement and try again. All right, so that should get our mines placed. After the mines are placed, we want to go through and fill in numbers. So fill in numbers. Now, this is all the behind the scenes board. People can't see where all the mines are. They can't see all the numbers, but we're going to go ahead and count them. So we do four and x equals zero. X is less than the size, x plus plus. And we want to do a four y in here. Four and y equals zero. Y is less than the size y plus plus and then what are we going to do for each one of these we want to go up here and count the nearby mines right and then we want to write that number so how do we count the nearby mines well we don't have to worry about that we're going to say int um Mines. We already have mines, so we'll do in near mines. Near mines equals, and we will paste our near mines thing. So we have to pass the field. We need to pass the size, and then our x and our y coordinates. And then what we want to do is convert this number into a character and put it into the field so field so and probably only if there's a, a zero there i mean not a zero there so if near mines so that means it's one or more or we can just be explicit and say it's greater than zero then we want to do field x y equals and then we have to figure out the character value so zero the character zero looks like that we can also add a number to it near mines and that will end up making it a character that is a number 
This only works really good because the highest number of mines you can get near you is, well, nine if all the spots around you are mines, which is still a character and we're good. So we'll fill in our numbers and that will take care of everything here. So we've got, we've got the field cleared out. We've got our mines placed and then we're putting all the numbers. Now we have to actually count the number of mines. So we'll do that. So how do we do that? Well, we have to figure out first of all, an X and a Y location and what's nearby that what's directly next to it. And we want to check all locations, the ones to the left of it, the ones to the right of it, the ones above it, below it, all of them. So, Let's have an integer mines and we'll equal that to zero. We don't really care about the number itself. All we care about is the ones near it and things like that. So if, if we're at the border, we have some problems. So we have to figure out what happens for border things. But if X is well, if it's a uh, zero, that means that we are next to the border, right? So this is the, <clears throat> let's say the low X border. If we're not there, we don't have to worry about the ones that are low, right? Then we have to look at what about if we are next to the Y border? Well, that's problematic as well. So if it's a less than the X border, we don't need to worry about checking anything to the lower X's. <laughs> So we can check just the ones that are above it. I think the easiest way to do that might actually be to create another function. So we'll do another one right here. A Boolean is mine. We'll pass it the field, the size, well actually the field and the X and the Y. There we go. We can pass all of them. It won't hurt. All right. Actually, it's probably better if it, you pass the size. Okay. So this one's even easier. So we pass the field in there and say uh, if x is less than zero, return false. If y is less than zero, return false. If, now you gotta remember the size is all the way up to, the size is actually outside of it. So if, X is greater than or equal to size, return false. And if Y is greater than or equal to size, return false. So what we're doing is we're removing anything outside of the borders. False for everything outside the field. And then we just need to return false or true depending on if the field location itself is a mine. If field x y equals x then we're going to return true otherwise we'll just return false all right so now we're good is mine is taken care of so now i can actually do this much cleaner I don't need to worry about checking borders inside this one because it's checked in the other one above. So I count near mines. So if this one is on the board, I just need to check all the ones around it and figure out if they're mines. 
So if is mine, and let's pass it the field, the size, x and y, and I just need to figure out. I just need to figure out each of the spots that I'm going to do. And there's eight spots. So I'm going to do the two X's or three X's. So I've got the X minus one, minus one, minus one, the X's, and then the X's plus one. And then the Y's are going to do um, either they are um, minus one Y and plus one. And the two middle ones are either going to be minus one and plus one. And then the other ones right here are minus one and plus one. So this gets all eight positions around me and it'll only return update update mines right here. If the one is a mine and I can just return mines. All right. So I count my near mines and then I probably want this one right here at the top, even though it comes before it. All right. So now we have the board being generated. We're counting out the mines. We are going through and we are putting the number of mines listed there. And the last thing I think we want to do is just display the board and see what it looks like. So void display field. And we can just do a just copy this over right here and paste it. And so what we have is a display field where we're going to go looping over all of the stuff. Now the field is going to be a little tricky because the field, you have to decide, do you want to display each X first, each Y first? I mean, are the X's and Y's going to be tied to a coordinate system or not? So let's go ahead and assume the Y's are going to be our up and down and our X's are going to be columns. So Y's are rows, X's are columns, and I will go through it. And because I need to do each row one at a time, I'm going to do a for loop over the rows first. For int Y equals zero. Y is less than size. Then Y plus plus. And four and x equals zero. X is less than size. X plus plus. And what I want to do for each one of these is display what's there. So I'll just do a std c out. And I'll do field x y. And then after I finish a row right here, I'm going to print out a blank line or a new line character. C out STD and L. So that should display the entire field. So I can go ahead and copy that and go to the very top and I can just make my field, create the mine field, and then display it. So create and display. So I've got my create mine field. I'm going to pass it in the field. I'm going to pass it in the size, which is a capital size. And I want to pass in a number of mines. And then I'm going to display it. Display field and I pass in the field and I pass in the size and it should print it out and if everything works out it'll look beautiful so I'm going to run this run my minesweeper field generator and 
you can see it has placed my field right here. You can see that this one, this mine right here, and this mine right here are close, and so these are both twos. I think my mine density is pretty low, so I might want to increase my mine density so it looks a little better, and maybe shrink the size of the field. So I'll go down to 15, and maybe I'll make it 25 mines. I'll go ahead and run this again, so we can see much better. So you can see a higher density, there's a three here because there are mines around it. And you can see blank spots. And so this is basically what the mine field looks like. Um, it's not very clear why we have a bunch of extra ones and twos up here when I don't see any mines in this area. So go down here and count my mines, make sure that my mine counting is correct. Mine zero, it counts all the ones nearby it. Let's see. All right, let's see. I wonder if I'm overwriting some of the mines because I'm filling in this over here. So maybe I need to do one more thing. So um, instead of checking just the near mines, so I'll do um, if um, field x, y is not equal to x. So then I'll do this. That way I'm not... All right, let's see if that solves that. Okay. Uh, okay, so that looks better. I think what was happening was I had two mines in each other and they override each other. So that's good. Now we got this part. Uh, maybe make it a little bit cleaner. Um, the spaces are a little bit distracting. So um, if it's a, let's put a dot instead. Maybe they're not distracting, they're just hard to see. So run that. And then I have my minesweeper. All right, so now you can look at it and it's generating the minefield. You can see how many mines there are. Um, and then once you have this thing generated, you can, well, play a game if you wanted to. But this is how to generate a minefield and calculate the numbers out. And I guess the is mine thing right here, it does help you with borders. So you don't have to worry about it because you can just dump it right there as opposed to checking in here and then displaying the field. You can do pretty easily. Just remember your X's and your Y's figure out how you want them to actually be. If you care about going with the coordinate system or if you are doing your own X's and Y's. Okay. So this is a mine super generator.